Hello, so in today's episode, Digital Marketing Answered, we will be discussing with uh, Megan how marketing leaders can generate revenue from email marketing. So Megan, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm a MarTech executive here at Innovation Visual and I've been here for nearly two years. So my main focus here is email marketing and all things MarTech. So we also do automation and pop-ups and website conversion as well. Nice. So yeah, so if you're new watching here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel before we start. Hit the like button and leave comments, questions, feedback. We love to hear from you. So if we get started with this, um, Megan, broad question, why should marketing leaders invest in email marketing and what are the benefits? Yeah, so email marketing is, I would say, is quite an underrated channel of marketing. And I think the key thing is the fact that when you send emails to people, you're sending them straight to them. You're like having direct contact with a, con with a user. So I think it's a really important channel for um, businesses to get hold of and to use well. But I think what's really important is email marketing isn't just sending a newsletter or sending a product update here and there. There's so much more to that. And we can do campaign work, we can do automation. So email marketing enables you to send the right message at the right time, really. Um, and yeah, there's so much more to it. And you can really nurture people, whether they're ready to buy, whether they're not ready to buy. If you've got their email address, we can really nurture them throughout the journey but then it doesn't stop there when they become a customer of yours you can keep nurturing them forever so that's why email marketing is so powerful because once you've got the data we can do so much with it yeah amazing and then how does that you know using email marketing as you're saying how does that then lead to revenue yeah so looking at it in two separate ways so from an e-com business perspective the way that revenue really comes to play with email is through automation. So whether that's abandoned cart workflows, whether that's browser abandonment, um, you know, win back campaigns, there's so much you can do. So ultimately, by sending the right message at the right time via email, you help drive people back to your site to then convert them. So for instance, I'm sure everyone's aware of abandoned cart emails, but just in case you don't know, um, you know, if someone add something to their car, but then doesn't check out after a certain time period. If you've got their email address, you can send them a little nudge to be like, oh, hey, we've realized that you, you know, do you still want to buy this? And then you send them back to their site because we all know everyone's busy and you might add something to your car and forget. So it just adds as a reminder to get them there. So obviously that helps drive revenue. But from a B2B perspective, obviously sales cycles tend to be longer and it's not so directly attributed to revenue so but what you can do with email is help nurture them across the journey and whether you know you might not necessarily measure revenue straight away but you would look at goals instead so how many forms have been submitted how many um, people have signed up for a webinar got in touch with you um, signed up for a demo wanted to download a form and then you can nurture them throughout and you can measure it success that way. So you look at how many people, yeah, it, you know, from a signing up to the newsletter or downloading a form, how many people then came to be an MQL in the system and things like that. So you look at revenue differently because it's not directly attributable, but you look at it as a whole and how you can nurture them throughout the sales cycle. Yeah, that makes total sense. Very well explained. So yeah, thank you for that. And I can imagine with all of these emails going out, especially with B2B, B2C, um, so many contacts in the database, so many customers to manage, you know, pre-sale, post-purchase kind of thing. How on earth do you manage all those contacts? Yeah, so that is a very good question. And as well, every business is so different some people have a small database some people have a huge database and there's lots of things we look at here at innovation visual in terms of managing that one is you want to actually see are those people worthwhile contacts so to do that you would generate reports and dashboards to help identify how people are interacting with your emails how are people engaging with your website because you know when you have tracking code installed on the website and we've got their email 
um, you know, you can see the user behavior on the site as well. So that's really useful information. And CRM such as HubSpot enable us to see all of that data. So you can really drill down and see who are your most valuable contacts. But also, um, you know, with managing contacts, there's no point having 100,000 contacts if 90,000 of them are seriously unengaged or, that you know, they're rubbish contacts. So in terms of managing it, we are really strict on filtering that data and cleansing that data so that you're left with only the engaged ones. So yeah, ultimately, I'd say reporting is the way you can really help drill down and see who is in your database and who is worthwhile keeping. Yeah, that makes sense. And then it, and then I'm guessing that, you know, if you're cleansing the database, it then saves money, essentially, because you're not having to keep these disengaged contacts that aren't really going to do much and give you money <laughs> definitely yeah because the thing is with you know hubspot and clavio you're and most crms you're paying for an, an amount of contacts per month so i know with um database emails there's lots of different types of people particularly yeah and lots of different types of personas particularly with you know um b2c things b2b things and targeting and all of that when it comes to actually emailing people when you talk about personalization and segmentation, what do you mean by this and the effectiveness? Because I know it can be super effective, but how do you actually put it into practice? And yeah, what does it actually mean for clients? Yeah, that's a really good question. So personalization and segmentation, they're kind of the industry standards now. It's just, you know, users are expecting us to do that as standard. And, you know, a lot of people that don't really work in email marketing probably think like that could mean you know put in the first name in the subject line or first name in the email copy but that's like you know it's not enough anymore and to really segment and personalize segments of data so you know how we do it is you know to be honest you can have a segment of anything you can have a segment based on demographic you can have a segment based on purchase behavior you can have segments based on job titles based on industries it's really anything you liked it to be but having segments of data um, of your contacts really helps you understand who are the key revenue drivers, who are more engaged, who are worthwhile investing in. Um, if you've got a segment of data and actually they're doing nothing for you, then that helps you understand your contacts more and helps you understand your customer base. But likewise, you know, we've done it a lot for B2C where, you know, having it's not necessarily obviously revenue is key, but also it helps in understand engagement as well, because you could have certain segments of people where certain content resonates more, so we can send them a more timely, more relevant um, you know, email newsletter, or just even using smart content within email to differentiate different sections based on preference. So yeah, the segments are really important. Um, but then personalization does involve segments, but more so it's just about delivering the right message at the right time. So, you know, personalization can be, you know, you can pers personalize anything really. Like we've done stuff with clients where we've had, um, so say from a B2B perspective, we've had it where um, if what they're on a certain web page and they're browsing and we, you know, we've got their email, so we know, we know they're browsing, um, you know, you can see, okay, so they've, they've done this, let's show them a, you know, pop up to a related blog and keep them on the website. So it's not just about emails. Um, it's about how, when you've got their emails and they're interacting with them, how can they, the journey still be personalized when they go to your website and things like pop-up CTAs and banners all help to, you know, feed part of that journey. So yeah, it kind of, that's why email marketing is so broad now because it extends beyond just the emails themselves. But yeah, it's all important to help deliver, you know, timely and relevant communication, you know, B2C, um, you know, personalized emails like would count as abandoned cart and things like that, like delivering it at the right time when they've reached a certain stage in the buyer's journey. And, you know, we that's why basically email marketing is so cool. There's so much you can do. I could talk about it forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds super clever. Um, being able to literally personalize email content um, and send different different types of people and obviously speaking to them, as you say. Um, and how do you actually split that data up? Um, how do you know who to send to? Yeah, that's a really good point. So in terms of segments, 
um, you know, we have some clients that already, you know, they know they want to target particular people based on job title or industry. So we can already craft that data from what they have in their database. But where you're kind of, you know, you don't, no one wants to just do guesswork and just send emails out to anyone. So to help understand, if you're like, I actually have no idea who's in my database, what we've done for some of our B2C clients is send a specific email asking them to log their preferences. And obviously, you know, we don't want to make things difficult for people. We want to show them the value of, oh, if you select your preferences, this means you'll get content specifically delivered to you, relevant to your interest. Um, and then, you know, you, we had a form to fill in, they fill in the form and then immediately you get that data and you can get that split. You can go, OK, um, you know, X amount of people love lipstick, X amount of people want to hear about eyeshadow. And then you can understand based on the volume of contacts in those segments where to um, really start your efforts with segmentation, because, you know, it's not a it's not a quick win. It's not um, something you can just transform overnight. It's something you build upon over time. So, um, yeah, so it's really a, a trial and error. Yeah, like some businesses know who they want to speak to and we can tailor those segments. But otherwise, it's like actually putting it out to your contacts in your database. Like, because you could you could be really surprised by the results that come back. So, um, yeah, it's never a, a guesswork as such. It's all about getting the data right and then going from there but yeah. yeah it's really really cool yeah and I guess when you say that you're gonna you know give them good helpful content it needs to be top quality helpful content yeah. rather than especially if you said you're going to personalize it in a certain way it needs to like meet their need and they need to almost miss that like they want to see your emails they want yeah. to see the emails that come through rather than oh no they've evil emailed me again let's just get rid of that so you yeah. want those customers that are super engaged and they know that every time that you email them it's going to be a really good email yeah. <laughs> they're going to actually get something from it so. definitely, definitely cool um so yeah that's super informative and i guess the segmentation and personalization stuff is probably one of the most important things of email marketing making sure that you're sending the the emails that people want to see as we were saying so with emails obviously that's not the only thing that you can be doing to engage with customers how do you kind of use email marketing in the midst of your digital marketing efforts and how do you you use other channels as well as email marketing to really do well and, and drive that revenue? Yeah, so email marketing, I always think sits in the middle of the funnel. So as we all know, like, you know, we want to drive people to the site, whether that's, you know, through social media, through paid ads, through um, SEO, that that's also that's all really important because we can't just pluck their email address out of anywhere. We need them to give it to us and want to give it to us. So that's why all that work that you put in at the beginning to get contacts to your site is so critical because there's no point spending loads of time on an email marketing strategy if no one's coming to your website because you've got no one to send it to. So that's all the like beginning of the process, getting it there. And then it's making the website also the user experience there. Great. So that they're like, oh, you know, love this brand, love this company. And, you know, they might not be ready to buy yet. They might just be having a browse. But that's where we can then do things such as pop ups um, and banners to help entice them to give their email address. And as I said, they have to want to do it, obviously. So that's making it relevant. Like, why should they give you your email address and making yeah, it easy for them to do so and like they want to. So all that effort beforehand, you need to make sure it's not wasted when you get to the site. If there's if it's not clear how to do a pop up or if the pop ups only going to show once a month, then you're missing out on a huge amount of people that could be signing up to your database. So it all happens there. But then post, um, you know, when someone's giving you your email, it's all about just keep nurturing them. So within the emails, we don't just want to talk about the website, we can talk about their social channels, get them over there, because if they're wanting to give your email address, the chances are they would also happily follow you on socials. So promoting that and then they at every channel they turn whether it's social um whether it goes on the website whether it's email they're aware it's creating that brand awareness um across everything you do so that's why yeah it's, it's you should never just focus on one avenue it's looking at everything because it all ties in together 
Yeah, absolutely. And then I don't want to mention it again, but how would you actually use that personalization from emails? And then when you're sending them to the site, how do you continue that personalization and making sure that they feel that you're really speaking to them directly all the way through that journey? Yeah. So there is so much you can do um, in HubSpot and Klaviyo, the two platforms we use. They're excellent for creating pop-ups and banners like I was talking about. And it's you can do, you know, the standard one that appears to everyone. But once we have their email address and we understand, you know, we but like we were saying earlier about segmentation and personalization, when we've got their interests, whether that's, yeah, like say we talk about makeup example, like if they're interested in eyeshadow, we can then start going, okay, to people, like we have a segment of people that love eyeshadow. Okay, great. So when they go on our website next, let's show them banners promoting our new eyeshadow product and only to those people because that's who want to see it. Um, so it's things like that. You can really help deliver a personalized experience so they can go, oh, like, you know, they know me so well that, you know, it's great. It's a great experience for them. Um, but yeah, likewise, um, there's other things we can do. So like in HubSpot, um, they have smart content. And if you have a HubSpot website, for instance, we can have um, smart content on the website itself. So again, changing text that appears based on preference or based on segment. Um, there's just so much you can really customize it how, how much you want, really. It's kind of quite amazing how much you can do um but yeah it's just it's and also the key thing is people always says like oh I don't want it to be creepy and yeah so don't be we tend to not do like you know necessarily say the name and things that's a bit like oh that's a bit weird but there's so much you can do and even chatbots as well we can um you know tailor the te the content of the chatbot to the person and things like that it's basically creating it it's not looking at it just as email but looking at it as a whole and the website experience as well because fundamentally most of the time in the emails we're taking them to the website so if the website experience is poor and it's not personalized like emails are then they're going to be disengaged and not complete the action that we spent all the time doing and crafting in the emails so yeah it's really important that makes sense. No, that makes sense yeah I guess it's like the gateway and then your the mm -hmm. website's like the big finale and that's where you need yeah. to convert them so yeah that that's important but then on the flip side of um of you know as you say not being creepy and all that you don't want to go too I guess too personalized and you don't want to make it too confusing otherwise managing it would be a nightmare if you've got a million different segments <laughs> yes, exactly. um, and also it's probably not as effective because then you need yeah so yeah no it sounds super interesting and definitely something for every business to try um so what um what role or what tips do you have should i say do you have for those people who are running email marketing campaigns and testing different things but they see that unsubscribe rate increase i know that's a big thing and people get a bit worried about that what like what tips do you give people and what would you suggest on that and how do you I guess reduce unsubscribes on emails yeah so obviously we don't want high unsubscribe rates because that impacts our email health which isn't great um but I would say there's a few things so kind of what we spoke about today personalized content people could be unsubscribing because the content they're receiving isn't useful or relevant to them so again that's where segmentation is like should be paramount to your email marketing strategy because without it you're just taking a stab in the dark and just like sending things out for the sake of it and people will get annoyed and that's why they unsubscribe so I think that's like overall tip number one but on the flip side, like kind of controversially, I think also to not be afraid of unsubscribes in a way that we want to manage it and be proactive ahead of people pressing the unsubscribe. We want to give them the opportunity to change things and for us to change things. So by that, I mean, um, we have things such as like sunset workflows. And what they do is they target people who are unengaged with your emails. Um, and we send a series of few emails and we're trying to get people to think, do I want to unsubscribe myself now? Or is there something that could be changed? So whether it's by the segments and the personalization, 
if they want to update their preferences. So if you're sending them content about eyeshadow, but actually they're not bothered anymore and they want to see all of it, they can update it. And then suddenly the emails you're sending are different, more relevant to them. And then they're like, oh, cool, I'm happy to stay subscribed. But likewise, we also have, you know, as you get closer, so say they're two or three emails, as you get closer to the end of the workflow, it's more of a breaking up. A few emails will be like, hey, um, you know, do are you sure you don't like you're nearly we're nearly broken up? Like you sure, you sure? And then, you know, if someone wants to stay subscribed and they're like, oh, you know, they were just busy and haven't opened emails for a while, haven't engaged with them, they can click a button to be like, oh no, I still want to stay subscribed. But if they still don't engage, then we manually unsubscribe. Well, manually we'll set up automation background to unsubscribe them before they press it. That obviously doesn't impact, you know, that's still an unsubscribe. But I always think you don't want people in your list. Like it could be great. You could have such a huge email marketing list. But if all those contacts are really disengaged, there's no point you're paying for them. And you could actually be missing out on people that you could add to your list. But because you've got no wriggle room left, you know, you can't do it. So you kind of it helps manage it because then you end up having people that either re-engage by updating preferences. They actively want to stay subscribed or they become unsubscribed and then you're a win-win really because you've got more space to market to new people. So um, yeah, that would be my two things. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And yeah, not being scared of those unsubscribes because it might just help you. You might just build more engaged subscribers. So <laughs> get rid of the ones that don't want to engage yeah. anymore and it will improve your health score. So yeah, amazing. And then I just wanted to come back to that automation thing that you spoke about mm -hmm. at the start. Um, I know you kind of touched on how that can help with revenue and how that is a massive driver of revenue. Could you expand on that and also talk about why it's so effective at driving revenue as well as why it's so efficient at driving mm -hmm. revenue and the fact that, you know, once it's there, it's there and kind of the work's been done. So, yeah, ex expand on that. Yeah, so efficiency is a really key one because obviously you've got to set it up. Once you've set it up, it's running in your sleep. You don't need to, You obviously we iterate it as we go and check it's working okay. But once you put the legwork in or your marketing teams put the legwork in, it's done. You don't need to redo it and you can add to it, tweak it and work more on the segmentation. So efficiency wise, it's brilliant. Like it's just an ongoing thing. Um, but it's so important because Email campaigns are great for, you know, if we want to have a little touch point for, you know, newsletters, product launches, um, you know, sales, uh, you know, new demo demo systems that B2B business is doing, that they're great. And there's a time and place for campaigns. But an automated system of emails just helps to deliver a more personalized experience fundamentally. If we look at B2C, all of the nurture around there about abandoned carts, about, um, you know, browse abandonment, about win back. And we can also target based on like, um, like churn risk or review ratings. It just basically lets people think like, oh, like this email's great. Like it's come at the perfect time. So everyone in industry tends to talk about Moonpick being an excellent example here. They have personalized experience and with automation set up so that when you sign up to you know you buy a card and you say like this is for someone's birthday it logs that birthday and then when it's close to that time the year after it will say hey do you want to um add the, this birthday card again for bob it's bob's birthday coming up do you want to buy my card and it's just that timeliness is what's great and that's only possible with automation and having all that data set up in the background so that's obviously b2c and that's great so yeah it's all ongoing and, and to be honest there's no there's no limit we could you could do automation for everything birthday campaigns um anniversary campaigns gift campaigns there's so much you could do and it can all be automated so that's like brilliant but also automation is important for B2B. And, you know, as we said, there's a, they've got big sales cycles. You know, you don't want to be manually sending out emails all the time. So that's where automation and segmentation is key because you can really drill down, um, send timely emails based on how where they are in the journey to help them drive them closer to conversion. Um, but also the automation for B2B helps facilitate things such as lead scoring and life cycle stages 
and help you really qualify those leads before they get past to sales. So we can make sure that we're really only focusing our efforts on the, you know, the best quality leads. So that's all done through automation. Um, but likewise, also really importantly, data cleansing is all done through automation. And you want to have a system set up in the background that's automatically screening those lists based on criteria, filtering them out, removing contacts that don't, um, you know, whether they're through spam, whether they have um, their emails are bouncing, whether, you know, they're not the right person, whether they're an internal person that's just signed up to your email marketing, but you don't want to be paying for them. So it's kind of, it does it all in the background. So um, you don't have to keep, you don't have to think about it and worry and go, oh my gosh, like, am I going to go over my like contact limit this month? Am I going to get lumped with a huge bill? Um, it will do it all for you so you can keep on track. So yeah, essentially everything can be automated and it's really invaluable. It helps you be more efficient. It helps you drive more revenue, drive more conversion and drive a more personalized experience to your contacts and your database. No, it sounds amazing. Sounds like it saves a lot of time, especially the data cleansing because that manual <laughs> process is painful. Yes. Um, do you have do you have any um examples from your experience of you know what what's your favorite automated campaign that you've created or what's mm. what's driven the best results i would say so i've got two two types of campaigns for different reasons my first so we've got we've got you know we've got a lot of b2c clients and we always find like regardless of the industry and we have got such varied industries here at IB abandoned cart and browse abandonment style um workflows always work really well and i personally love them because they are you know they're fairly simple to put together but once you put to get them together they're so timely that they always deliver results because people do forget to check out and i always think that they're really rewarding to see the revenue come from it um but I would also say from a flip side, what's really exciting is Clavio have a well, relatively new feature called Clavio Reviews. It's an add-on to their CRM email system. And basically reviews are all can all be automated. And I think that's a really exciting area of MarTech. Um, you know, there's a plugin that we've installed in, on Shopify site. So you've got it there and it basically your Clavio is linked with your Shopify and when an order um, gets shipped it has a delay and then it sends out review requests and I know like reviews are so important for businesses and I think it's really impressive that Clavio have like a native feature that helps streamline and automate and what is also so exciting off the back of it is you can create segments based on you know the, the star rating people gave you can have custom properties in the review that um help you identify people, whether it's by industry, whether it's, um, you know, by whether they purchase again, and then you can create automation off the back of it. So if they said, um, you know, you know, if they don't want to purchase again, which hopefully they won't, but if they said that, you can then send a follow up, a personalized email that, you know, you could brand it up to be like it's from the founder and say, oh, I'm, you know, so sorry, like, is there anything you could do to help? And it's just really making, you know, even, I think what's actually really imp like impressive about it is it's turning even a potential negative customer experience into a positive one. Because so many times with reviews, you can you see them on websites that we all shop on, and you know the negative reviews never get replied to or something. Whereas what I love about Clavio's native feature here and the automation you get set up is that you know you're fixing that, you're replying, you're it's it's. A, it feels like you're actually doing something about it, which will always impress someone, especially if they've had a negative experience, rather than thinking like they've just gone into the abyss and they're like, oh, they don't want to deal with me anymore. And, and fundamentally, that should help them come back and be a customer because you have the opportunity to fix that bad experience. So, yeah, there's lots I like doing, but I think I get excited with all the, the new technology that's ever evolving in MarTech and what we can do with it and to help our clients. Sounds great. Sounds really good um, and very exciting, especially with the Clavio stuff. I know there's lots of new things going on there, so that's cool and would be good to see what else we can be doing. Um, so I know this is all about revenue generation and that's what businesses care about. When it comes to actually reporting on email performance, how how do you understand the success of your email campaigns and report on the revenue that's actually generated 
from the emails yeah so this is like where your marketing teams or your agency really should come into their own um because you know we all know leaders in marketing biz you know marketing you know they're busy they don't want to be dealing with the like they don't really care about click rate and open rate and things like that they want to know like is email working as a channel and I think what's really key when looking at revenue from email there's two things the first one is attribution is key and being consistent with attribution but realizing that I think often we tend to get caught up in thinking you know we send email a out how is email a done in revenue but actually we need to look at it broadly like email is part of the customer journey and if you look up your own experience you know do you really like get an email and then straight away do the action you probably you open it you engage with it and you go oh that's interesting or oh, i want to know more i'll do it later and then later you directly search their website on google you go to it you complete the action if we're looking at direct attribution that wouldn't sync up but it was the main reason someone later went to the website so i think it's looking at the model that you're doing and that's where you know crm system so clavio you can choose the time period so i think its default is five days so five days from receiving and engaging with that email it will classify it as being attributed to revenue and i think that's really great to be honest because it reflects real life um so i think that's key is like being a bit having a broader overview of how it's working as a whole and thinking what part does it play in the journey but also um yeah with reporting yeah looking at it as a whole thinking how how is it doing as a whole channel rather than being too drilled down into the specifics of it um but likewise hubspot is great because that does reporting and it shows you um, influence revenue and attributed revenue again so like influence being what part it paid a part in the journey rather than it being directly attributable attributed to um emails so yeah it's just taking a step back making sure you understand what's being um you know reported on but that's where your marketing team and your agency should really come into their own because they should be doing that and telling you um and making tweets if not but yeah, it's looking at the attribution model, I think, is the, the fundamental thing of reporting is getting those reports set up, making sure you understand them and always looking at the bigger picture rather than the like minute detail. Yeah, that makes sense. And obviously reporting on the email performance is so important because it means you can make changes based on the reporting. Yeah. And also when it comes to things like segmentation, you know, you know what's driving them, you know what segments are driving the most revenue. So you can then, as a business, you can understand what kind of customers are driving them and spending the most. So yeah. you can use all of that. And um, yeah, wow, very interesting. No, that's good. Definitely reporting is key at the end of it. So we can keep tweaking and making improvements. So yeah. And I think as well, like kind of going by what you just said, like, it's also worth noting that whilst revenue is key we should be looking at engagement because engagement helps facilitate the revenue further down the line um you know if you've got really poor engagement then the chances are they're never going to complete your desired action and you want to really and that's where as we said earlier segmentation personalization all comes into play um because yeah you can measure the performance and then that will facilitate like it's you know fundamentally if people are really engaging with your emails they're going to complete the action you want at some point because they're clicking through they're engaging they're going to your website they're exploring um so yeah it's looking at revenue of course is fundamentally that's what you want to know you don't want to be investing in a channel that's not working for you but i think building up the engagement metric side will help bring greater revenue in the future yeah, and it comes down, or particularly for B2C, it comes down to that loyalty because if people are engaging and they're, they're getting those emails, they're clicking on things, they're getting involved in competitions, things like that, and buying things every now and then, obviously they're not going to purchase something every day, but um, they're, they're loyal to your brand and that's, that's what you want people to be because then ultimately that will increase the lifetime revenue from that customer um mm -hmm. and yeah that's how it kind of drives the revenue so yeah it's just keeping them engaged 
keeping them in the loop I guess definitely so, yeah. it just means they're going to always be front of mind when they're ready yeah. to purchase that your brand comes out on top in their head exactly exactly cool well that's that's super interesting conversation just finally last question are there any changes in email marketing that viewers should be aware of or th exciting updates that are happening or yeah changes in email marketing yeah so i think the one that everyone still keeps talking about so it happened a while ago now is the apple ios um ios 15 updates and how that impacted um, open rates so i think in terms of changes i think it's kind of people are slowly thinking okay let's not let's take open rates with a pinch of salt but i think people are still probably focusing a bit too much on them um because with that update basically um apple users it will mark them as like automatically that they've opened an email even if they haven't so it's going to inflate the open rates um so i think that's why in terms of like looking at the metric side of email marketing and the engagement side looking at click through rate is going to be super important so looking at that continuously like taking that as more important over the open rate is key but also i think you know everyone ai is like the buzzword at the moment in marketing everyone's talking about ai but i think it's important to note that each like CRM platform, they're continuously investing in AI and they're doing really cool things with the platform and it's just keep being on top of that. So, um, you know, HubSpot always doing really cool things with AI, constantly changing things. But Klaviyo also are doing really cool things. They've got segments AI. So you can now like write it like using natural language you can write in like chat gbt would you write in saying can you produce me a segment on people who i don't know people who are located in reading and who have purchased more than three times from us and then they'll literally pull that together check you're happy and then it's already built your segment so it saves you time of instead of having to go through and going through all the property list figure how do I get report how do I get this it does it for you so that's like great for efficiency point of view but also for discovery for finding if there's you know you there might be we all know in these CRM systems there's so many properties and it takes ages to understand them all so actually if you can have a tool that's there that means that you can just pull that automatically without you having to do all the digging and diving then it's brilliant so that's great but also they've got um an AI thing called predictive analytics. So that that's what I'm most excited about at the moment because it will basically identify based on the contacts you've got on your database, things like churn risk and average order value. These sorts of properties are notoriously quite hard to create yourself. So the fact that they're already there is amazing. And then obviously, as we said, there's loads of automation you can do off the back of it. So you can identify people that are ready to that are likely to churn and you can target them. Likewise, people with high average order values. There's so much you can do. Um, but yeah, so I would say, yeah, AI is a really interesting one in the MarTech space and email marketing space and just keeping on top of those trends, having a look, you know, every CRM platform has new things they're doing all the time, um, but it's keeping up to date with them. And obviously, you know, if you've got a marketing agency, like we keep our clients up to date um, on these trends and everything that's happening. So yeah, it's just keeping up to date because you don't want to fall behind. It's very easy to fall behind in email marketing and you don't want to be one of them. So yeah, it's all very exciting though. Yeah, wow, constantly loads of new changes. And yeah, that AI thing <laughs> happening. Yeah. So yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's going to change rapidly so mm -hmm. yeah um, amazing stuff and thank you so much for joining us on the digital marketing answered podcast um we hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks you thank you so much for watching whatever platform you're on please uh, leave comments feedback let us know what you want to discuss and yeah like the video subscribe to the youtube channel and we'll see you next time